Hey guys, Rachel's here. I'm back. I know I took a little bit of a hiatus and it's because of a very exciting reason. I actually had a pencil stash studio built out for me at home and it is so nice. I'm finally in here. It is so much nicer than my previous setup. And I went from a black desk to a bit of a white surface just so my camera's a little bit easier to focus and whatnot. The lighting was a little bit weird. So hopefully this will be a better experience for you guys as well as for myself. And now I have a dedicated, fun, inspiring space to color. And I might even show you guys around my studio uh, one of these days. I don't know if I'm going to do a full video. It's not quite done yet. So as soon as it's done, I'll uh, at least give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on where I like to color. And today we are actually going to be doing a page from this book. This is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I did the caterpillar page from this book a while ago, I want to say maybe like a year plus ago, and just kind of coming in, you know, new studio, new year, goodbye 2020, uh, you will not be missed. Um, I thought it would be fun to go back and just kind of revitalize by doing a page from a book that I don't color in very often. And because this is the original artwork from the book, um, it's you know, just kind of unique, you know, it's not kind of the typical thing that I color. So I thought it'd be really, really fun to do this page. Now this is the mock turtle and kind of the griffin page. And I don't know, I thought it'd be really fun to do. But first things first, speaking of new, I actually have to do something about these old glasses. These things are at least 10 years old, have not served me well. So out with the old, in with the new. And speaking of new, I got new glasses. And not just one pair, not two pairs, but three pairs from an online eyeglasses retailer called Zip. Now Zimf contacted me, not to sponsor a video, but just to see if I would be willing to try out their eyeglasses and then provide an honest review. And to be honest, I jumped at the chance. Their website makes it really easy to browse their extensive catalog of prescription glasses, sunglasses, reading glasses, and computer glasses. They've got so many fun options that it was actually really difficult to narrow it down to just the three pairs that I was going to get. These are the first pair. These are my absolute favorite. These are my little black dress kind of everyday workhorse glasses. These are called sophisticated and they're just like a nice, very simple kind of rectangular shape and they're super comfortable and they fit my face really well. These are my second pair. These are called Jasper. And it might be a little bit hard to tell, but these are green tortoiseshell. And these are my, like they're green, just for fun, why not? Uh, kind of pair that I can break out every once in a while. They are a little bit of a larger format, which again, I think fits my face and they are very comfortable. And these are the third pair. They are called Zuri, but they come in the color Tawny. They're almost translucent, they're like, pinky kind of peach color and because of the lack of contrast they almost disappear on my face. So when I feel like wearing my glasses but don't feel like my glasses should be wearing me, these are a great option. And I'm going to actually leave a link to all three of the glasses that I got down in the description below if any of these are of interest to you. Now I've been wearing these glasses for a little over three weeks now, and I'm very, very happy with them. Very happy with the process, the online process. The reps were super, super nice. Um, they're very, very good quality frames and lenses. Plus the company really stands behind their quality. They have a 30 day exchange and refund policy and a 12 month guarantee on the product. So if you wanna try brand new quality glasses at an affordable price, I definitely recommend them. And just for pencil stash viewers, Zinf is giving us a very steep, generous discount code. They are giving us 50% off of the frames and 20% off of the lenses. So at checkout, be sure to use the code PENCIL as your promo code when you are at checkout. So thanks again to Zinf for partnering with me on this video. Let's get back to it. So the first thing that I'll say about this page is that I'm actually kind of excited that I don't have any kind of concept about 
colors. Now, I'm familiar with Alice in Wonderland, kind of the Disney version, where she's in a blue dress, you know, blonde hair, but that's a very small part of this page. So I don't have any kind of preconceived notions about like what color, um, you know, the mock turtle should be or the griffin, and we can kind of play around a little bit. So, oh, also Wonderland in general, you know, it's kind of opposite of what you would typically, you know, think of you know, reality being like. So I think it might be fun to play around with maybe like the ground color and the sky color and that kind of thing. So we can play around on this page and have a little bit of fun. So let's pick out some colors. Now, I kind of want to be more on the bright side. So I'm actually going to open up my tin of Faber-Castells. And the one that's kind of speaking to me right off the bat are these pinks. Um, I don't know why I mean, obviously he's got like pig hooves and, you know, kind of a kind of a pig slash cow face. I'm, maybe he's a cow. I don't know. It's Wonderland. Who knows what the heck he is? He's a turtle and some kind of hooved animal. Um, but the pinks are speaking to me. So I think it might be really fun to maybe play around with some of these pinks. And the first one I'm going to use is this medium flesh color. This is a fantastic... Um, just kind of, you know, light tone to start with, and we'll just kind of see where it takes us. And I have to say, I, uh, this book is one of those that like, it's kind of intimidating. The paper quality is really, really nice. The, you know, images are obviously kind of iconic, um, but they're definitely not like my typical style. And so I do kind of shy away from coloring in it a little bit. Um, but I don't know why, like every time I kind of go into it, it uh, actually makes me very, very happy to color in it. The, the pencils glide really, really nice. And uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always happy that I did. So if you're feeling a little bit stagnant, maybe in your coloring, maybe go back to, you know, whatever little bin or, you know, bookshelf of uh, coloring books that you haven't touched in a while and maybe pull one out again. I'm just kind of placing this down in just the areas that I want to keep very, very light to start with. All right, let's switch over to, actually, let's be smart about this and let's pull out some of our color charts. Yeah, let's switch over to Rose Carmine. I really like this color. This will kind of be our next, our next color in the kind of gradient progression here. I'm going right up against and even slightly into those areas that we just put down just to help blend the two together. And while I have you, I hope you all had a very nice, happy holidays. I know I did. I hope you guys got to spend some time with your families, maybe take a little bit of PTO, all that good stuff. All right, let's switch. And I'm kind of looking for like something that's still in this like pink family. Maybe, maybe the pale geranium lake. I'm kind of tempted to maybe go a little bit more into this kind of range, the Pompeian red, just so that it's not so kind of predictable. Yeah, let's try that. And we can always switch off if it's not uh, kind of what we were looking for. Yeah, I like this, this is good. I find myself being a little bit too kind of matchy-matchy when I'm doing, like, you know, if I'm doing a pig, I will use all pinks when, you know, I really should be adding in, you know, a little bit of variation of color just to get all those different tones and all those different uh, kind of hues that, you know, ultimately play into the pink and that would complement it. I should, uh, I should definitely be branching out a little bit more. And while I color this, I'm of course thinking three steps ahead and wondering what color I'm gonna do the turtle shell because of course I didn't think about that before I chose the pinks. I mean, that, that would be, that would be crazy. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe I'll kind of go like opposite. Maybe I'll do kind of complimentary. I'm not really sure yet. All right, let's dive a little bit into the danger zone. What should I do here? I kind of want to add a little bit of purple. I think this red violet might be a little bit too expected. It's still kind of in that pink range. Yeah, let's just go for it. Let's do this deft blue color. That's actually really, really neat. I don't know that I've used this. 
And I'm really just going to focus this on some of these darker areas as my shadow and something a little bit kind of unexpected. Because why not? It's Wonderland. The other nice thing about this coloring book is that these little, you know, marks kind of already indicate where a lot of these, uh, like, shadows should be and some of these darker areas. And it does just kind of help you out a little bit if you're normally a little bit uncomfortable kind of placing these down yourself. And I am just going to go back in and just kind of tweak some of these areas with some of the colors I've already used. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like pink and purple, but I'm okay with that. Well, yeah, I actually really like going over this purple with this kind of Pompeian red. It just brings a little bit of it all together. Kind of bridges the gap a little bit. All right, when in doubt, I always like to go back to my color charts. I don't have to stick with the Faber-Castells. I can always kind of go to some of my other sets as well. I'm just kind of looking for like something to jump out at me. That's, that's the other reason I like these. Not only do I have kind of a visual representation of what my colors look like once they're down on paper, but I can also kind of put them right up against uh, you know, the work that I've already laid down and just kind of see what's, you know, looking like it's going to go. I'm kind of drawn to this like chestnut color. It's kind of earthy, but still has a little bit of that warm kind of red tone. Maybe with like a little bit of black raspberry. I wish I could stay with the Faber-Castells just because they're so milky on this paper, but it's all good. I don't think I have to. So let's grab chestnut and black raspberry. I'm going to take Crayola khaki and I'm just going to kind of placeholder some of these light areas. I'm just kind of bringing it into the area that I reserved and just kind of creating that nice kind of kind of mint tone there. Kind of nice to do like a little bit of a space of a long of a larger object um just to kind of practice a little bit so that you're not kind of putting the same like all the light color in all of the spaces all at once because then if you kind of want to pivot a little bit it's a little bit too late or you have to pivot you know quite a bit and this way you can experiment a little bit and then kind of apply you know whatever you learned to some of the other areas and then just kind of blend in the one where you were kind of experimenting and Maybe it might look a little bit different, but I always find that I can kind of go back in and make it look harmonious. I definitely like these colors together. This is speaking to me. It's very earthy. Again, I like to use really earthy colors. And even when I try to push myself outside the boundaries with like, let's do an Alice in Wonderland page, you know, something that's kind of, you know, opens the floodgates to being a little bit different. I still find myself gravitating towards, you know, palettes like this which is okay. I went a little bit wild and crazy with the purple on the pig. That might be my, my branching out for the moment. The other thing that you can do is actually, these are not just three colors. These are, you know, three colors to start with, and they vary, even within the same color, very much by how much pressure you apply. So I used very light pressure in most of these areas, and then I'm kind of using harder pressure kind of along here at the edges, which almost gets me to that black raspberry color, but it's still chestnut. So don't be afraid also to kind of experiment with what kind of uh, different looks and whatnot that you can get with the same pencil just by varying the pressure that you use. All right, on his flippers, I think we might need to switch it up just a little bit. So I think I am gonna use that black cherry, which is just a little bit more purple version of some of these colors that we put down. And let's see what that kind of does. And that might kind of bridge the gap that I'm looking for between like the purple, pink, kind of brighter shades that we used there and some of the more muted tones on his shell. All right, this is warm gray. I think 70%. We don't have to go too dark. And I'm just going to kind of run this along some of our edges here just to kind of drive home that this turtle shell is three dimensional and just kind of giving some darkness in some of these crevices and whatnot 
will just kind of make some areas pop and some kind of recede and give us that three-dimensional look. It'll also add just a little bit of differentiation between some of these purples. All right, do I dare blend this a little bit? I am seeing a little bit of white space kind of poking out and I don't want that. So I'll just use this kind of selectively. I don't want to muddy up kind of these lighter areas, so I might try to steer clear a little bit. Maybe just go into those areas like just a touch. Yeah, I like what that's doing. It's it's just kind of bringing everything a little bit more like smooth. All right, I think that that looks pretty good. I'm really, really happy with the way that the shell came out. So let's move on to Alice. And I can't help but kind of do her a little bit traditional. So I think I'm gonna grab one of these blues. I really like the way that the Faber-Castells feel on this paper. So maybe bluish turquoise. I saw the cutest thing at the container store the other day because my little container like lid broke. They have these like white kind of Starbucks looking coffee cup garbage cans and they're probably like maybe eight to ten inches tall and then the lid kind of teeters on top. I'm like oh my god that would be such a cute pencil shavings uh, garbage can but I just couldn't bring myself to buy it. <laughs> but now I'm kind of regretting it because I still use the one on the floor here and it's not as convenient as it would be if it was on the desk. I'm gonna use a very light hand here. I think that if I press too hard, this will go a little bit more like darker blue than I want it to. So I'm just gonna use a very light pressure and then I might change up my pressure in some of these areas where a lot of the hash marks are. All right, there's not too much of her dress that's actually kind of showing blue. A lot of this top area is, I think, just kind of part of her apron. So I'm going to fill in some of these darker areas with Prussian blue. Just kind of deepen some of these colors here. All right, that works. Now, how about her hair? Maybe a little bit of the dark Naples ochre and then maybe some burnt ochre. Then burnt ochre, just kind of over that, just to make it a little bit more blonde rather than yellow. I like that that works um I'm gonna save I hate doing skin tone <laughs> I was gonna save it but sometimes you just gotta eat the frog all right so I pulled out a couple of these I've got almond sand and copper and we can kind of use copper for a little bit of kind of the blush area let's just kind of start on her arms and we'll just kind of see how it how it translates and then I'm just going to kind of move up the gradient man she is pale all right we might skip almond altogether that one's way too late so let's focus on sand and copper. And I really like the way that this color is on its own, but I also really like it over this color. It's very soft, works very well as skin tone. And then I'm gonna take the copper and I'm gonna go along the hairline here. And the way that I like to do kind of contouring on the face is kind of wherever you would put like bronzer. I put this color. So kind of along like the hairline a little bit, maybe like just below the apple of the cheek. Along the neck here. And then 
just a little bit on like the side of the nose just to give it because there's barely any nose here so this will kind of give it a little bit more dimension maybe just a little bit on her eyelids and then you just want to keep kind of her t-zone light bridge of her nose her, um, her forehead and then what you can even do I might do it very lightly is just kind of do just a little bit of blush now for white on her apron I definitely like to keep that very innocent but you really don't want to just leave it white I like to make a little bit gray and I think what I'm going to do is actually take this warm gray number two, which is this one right here. And I'm just going to sort of dirty it with this in some of the folds and the creases. And same thing down here on her tights. All right, now let's move on to the Griffin. I kind of want to color him like yellows and oranges, like very kind of this, or maybe even maybe even like this kind of range, because this is this is not me. This is fun. This is a little bit bright. This is a little bit more in my wheelhouse. I think that'll look nice. It'll kind of play off of some of the warmer tones that we used on the mock turtle that are right above it and even kind of bridge some of the blonde here. Let's see, I just wanna make sure. I might even start with this sand color just to give a little bit of lightness on his chest here. And then in other areas around that, I can use a little bit more pressure to get that full kind of saturation of this pencil. I definitely have to find something fun to do in these kind of feathery moments. I don't know what that's gonna be yet. Maybe even some orange on his hand, or his hands, his claws. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears and I kind of want to go into this burnt ochre arena. I really like these color combos. Let's see what we can kind of get out of this. I'm just going to kind of focus this on again those areas that kind of want to darken up and down here under his toes. areas that might be a little bit shadowed like I'm kind of using it as like the darker of the of the yellow but not yet quite into like our dark dark spots yet I think I'll save that for something else but I think I'm gonna go into that area just a little bit just kind of bridge it once I get to that color all right let's put these aside for a minute what kind of green do we want like Maybe this one, or maybe this one. How about chromium green? Here we go. Chromium green opaque. And I like this one because it's very earthy, but it's not quite as like kind of muddy as that one. So what should we do here? There's a bunch of things we could do. We could kind of outline. We just kind of fill in the tips a little bit and just kind of blend it upwards towards the yellow. Or we could do kind of the underneath and blend it down towards the yellow, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Because now that I think about it, like it'll just kind of create the nice little illusion of like shadow under there. A little bit of visual interest. And these aren't very defined, so I'm just going to kind of have to make it up as I go. Like in certain areas, there really isn't kind of a place to do that. You just kind of have to figure it out. Oh my god, I just realized I haven't been showing you guys this this whole time. Alright. Learn my lesson. 
Sorry about that. All right, I really, really like that. Now I'm just gonna grab, I kind of wanna grab this indigo. This is dark indigo. And I kind of want to just add it a little bit in these really dark spots here, just because I find that when I grab dark indigo and a dark green, it makes this beautiful kind of navy color. And I think that would look nice here. And it won't read as like navy, it'll just kind of read dark. But if you kind of actually take a look at it, it's very navy. And I'll just to kind of differentiate maybe some of the shape here in the wing. Because one color looks super flat, two colors is better. But, you know, three or more is definitely the way to go if you want some variation and some dimension. All right, let's move on to, oh, you know what? I'm going to take that uh, juniper and I'm just going to kind of highlight some of these, some of these feathers just for fun. As I was looking at it, it just kind of looked like it was getting a little bit lost. So I'm just going to highlight a couple. All right, I'm going to pull out some of the Crayolas. I really like this taupe and kind of the antique brass. Let's pull those out. I'm gonna start with taupe. And I'm gonna do just kind of the light areas of the ground. And I'm very, very lightly with circular strokes. Just kind of laying this down. And then I'll layer the other colors kind of adjacent and amongst. Um, just to get a lot of variation here. All right, I did some work on the bottom here and it's you know still very, very flat, but I just wanted to point out, I'm gonna do something a little bit interesting with the border. So see how it's kind of drawn to where the lines sort of end in like a very organic, you know, kind of shape. Like it's not just a square border that's, you know, eco distance. So I thought I'd play that up a little bit and just kind of make kind of your regular border. And I uh, just have a little bit of fun with that. So now I'm gonna uh, kind of add some browns here and I'm definitely gonna add this chestnut color that we used earlier. It's kind of got some red in it. I thought that might be a nice add, especially in kind of some of these kind of dark shadowy areas. And I think it'll go nice with some of the browns that we've laid down already. And I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of this chestnut and then I'll also add some walnut brown. I also really like the Van Dyke brown add a little bit of that. So now I'm going to use these three colors and just kind of go through and we'll continue to layer. So our landscape kind of ground area will have six colors in it at least. <laughs> uh, so far it'll have six colors in it. Might even add a little bit more just kind of depending on how it all goes. All right, so I think that's good, at least for these three pencils. Now I think I'm going to add just a little bit of black, just kind of in some of these areas where it would be especially dark. And black is a very strong color, so I'm just going to use light pressure because it doesn't really take much to still get kind of the effects that, uh, that I'm looking for. I'll put it right there. And then I'm just gonna add it in some of these areas where the rock kind of side is showing here, especially down at the base. And then just a little bit in some of these shadows from our characters. So let's take a step back and let's look at the entire page again, because now we're going to go upwards. And I want to continue the same kind of like unique edge here up at the top. So it's definitely gonna take some creative kind of shaping, especially up here. Here it was a little bit easier, uh, but here I might have to get a little bit more creative. And here's water, and then it kind of goes into sky and then clouds. So I thought we could go back to our color charts. I am really liking this kind of, I know, 
I started out wanting bright colors and I, of course, ended up with a muted color palette. Uh, but that's me and that's okay. I really like uh, more muted tones and it's just kind of what I gravitate towards. Let's see here. So because the water is going to be so close to her dress in proximity, I want the water itself to not kind of compete with that and kind of look like it's one thing. So I'm just sort of thinking what I'm gonna do with the water here. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go in like this range, but I don't know if this is like a little bit too muted. Maybe even like this with like some pops of like this dark blue or maybe something in like the slate gray kind of range. That might be kind of our happy medium. Let's see if I can find my slate gray. It's right up at top because I love this color. And I might even pull out some of my lighter versions of that, which are like my wild blue yonder from Crayola. This one's always a really good kind of lighter version. So let's start with wild blue yonder. And I'm just gonna put this down as just like a foundational layer. And then I can kind of build onto it with my with my darker tones. All right, now let's switch to the slate gray. I always find that like horizontal, kind of organic, like shapes with my pencil always kind of work well with water just because of the way that the light normally hits it. Nope, I think I totally forgot this one. And then I kind of have to decide like, am I putting anything right here? I don't think so. Just because there's really no indication that the water shape kind of goes that far out. And also this will kind of create like a nice little stopping point here. And then maybe I can just sort of continue it up this way when I get into the sky. I think that will probably work best. All right, now I'm gonna grab a darker blue and I might even, I might even go for my dark indigo again. And this is the same one that we used here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with some spots. Especially kind of back towards the horizon line. And I'm using light pressure. This is a very saturated pencil. So I'm just using light pressure just to, just to add some color down, but not necessarily all that. Uh, like super pigmentation. And I'm trying not to make like super horizontal shapes. Um, definitely horizontal in kind of, you know, line shape, but if you make it too perfect, then it doesn't look like kind of the, the light hitting the waves. So here, I'm just breaking it up a little bit and uh, just trying to use a little bit more of an organic kind of wave shape. All right, I like that. All right, now what to do with the sky? Now I kind of want to do, gosh, if we hadn't used this rose carmine on the mock turtle, I think I would have wanted like a cool pink sky and we might still be able to do that. I don't know. It might be just a little bit too close and just this being very close with this, like I don't I don't want it to get too muddy and have these kind of stand out too much. So let's see here. Maybe there's another kind of way that we can accomplish that same. Ooh, I love this nectar color. Maybe a little bit of this nectar color. Is that too close to here? I think that might be okay. And maybe like something maybe in like the sand tone that might be too close to this and actually that that might be okay like maybe we'll use some of the sand tone like over here and then maybe we'll use some of the nectar color over here it might balance it out a little bit i don't know let's uh let's give it a go 
So I think I might use this sand color, like I was saying, kind of maybe focus it a little bit more on this side of the page and then we'll kind of bring some of our pinks maybe up in this area over there. And I'm just gonna sort of try to follow the line here in terms of like where it's going to kind of create that, that edge. And I'm just thinking through like how I might try to transition from the yellow to the pink. And I might just use the clouds. And I think this will actually blend really well with the yellow. And it'll create this beautiful kind of peach color. So I don't think that'll be too big of an issue. And I can even kind of bring it into this area as well. Oh yeah, I love where these two meet. This is looking really good. I'm gonna have to remember this combo. And I think I'll just kind of use the tip of our griffin's wing as the kind of border point for the top. And then this is sort of circular, so I think I'm just going to follow this same kind of angle downward for that border. Oh good, you guys can see this. Okay, I worried my camera wasn't pointed at it again. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to Nectar and I'm just going to put this in certain spots here. Just to add a little bit more dimension and some visual interest. Yeah, I am really liking this. Don't you just love when like something that you have no idea if it's going to work out, like actually works out and kind of pays off? That is such a good feeling. And I think you guys have seen, you know, from me before, I really like these kind of yellow, pink, like peachy kind of skies. They're so pretty. And I don't really lose this light pink section. I'm, I'm definitely loving this nectar, but I don't want to get too crazy. I definitely want to leave some of this light pink here. I do think that we are done. This one actually turned out much better than I thought it was going to. When I started coloring it, I thought I was gonna do some like wild and crazy kind of colors and you know, it, it just didn't, it just wasn't happening. And I definitely went a little bit uh, out of my comfort zone with some of the purples here. Um, and it, it, it actually kind of translated and then kind of influenced what I did on the shell. And I really like what I did on the shell. Um, and then it just kind of, you know, fed into the other things that I was doing, like, you know, kind of the, the unique color scheme on our griffin. And while it's not bright and bold, it's definitely unique because these animals are not found in nature. So we had, you know, just complete carte blanche to do something fun. And I really like it. I really like this coloring book. I don't know if it's still available. I got this a million years ago, but it's definitely a good one. The, you know, illustrations are obviously, you know, the classic ones, um, but the paper quality in this book is just beautiful. And it's kind of a joy to color in. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you again to Zim for partnering with me on this video and sending me some of their amazing glasses. Definitely check them out via the link in the description below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new and want more amazing adult coloring tutorials and content and color alongs and whatnot. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.